Welcome to this 19th lecture on calculus of variations. In this lecture, we will consider functionals depending on higher order derivatives. So, this is our 19th lecture. So, till now what we have done is, we have considered functional of the form this integration a to b f x y y dash or we have seen the case where uh, we have more than one function dependent on this variable x. So, we have x, y1, y2, yn, these are dependent functions and their first order derivatives, okay. In, the, in this case, we know that the Euler's equation is fy minus dy by dx of fy dash is equal to 0, right. And this is a second order differential equation and the constants, arbitrary constants, there will be two arbitrary constants in the solution of that differential equation, this differential equation, those can be obtained using the boundary conditions that y of a is specified and y of b is specified. And here, in this case, we have seen the solution is uh, given by the set of equations that are f1, f y1, uh, y1 minus dy by dx of f y1 dash is equal to 0. Then f y2 minus dy by dx of f y2 dash is equal to 0. And so on till f y n minus dy by dx of f y n dash is equal to 0. Okay, This is the set of n second order differential equations which are used to obtain the solution for this particular extreme, uh, particular functional, to obtain the extreme value of this functional, right. This will give us a solution of the form y1 is a function of x, y2 is a function of x, and so on, y n is a function of x, right. So, this is the uh, corresponding extremal of this functional and the uh, there will be two constants in each of these y's and those can be obtained because each y is specified at the points a and b. Now we want to look at the case where we have only one variable, uh, sorry, one dependent function on the independent variable x but we have not only one derivative involved, we, di we don't uh, only have this y dash but we have y double dash, y triple dash and y and its derivative and so on, okay. So we want to look at the functional where the integrand contains y, y dash, y double dash and so on up to y n, right. We would like to know what the Euler's equation will look like for this particular case, okay. We want to know what is the Euler's equation, Euler's equation for this case, okay. So, let's try to derive the Euler's equation for this particular case. Okay, so let us uh, briefly explain the problem. Let us write down what our problem is. We want to find out among all the curves yx which belong to this space d and av. We have already discussed what this space is. This space is the space of all the functions defined on the interval ab. Okay, such that those functions have continuous derivatives up to order n. Okay, so basically d and a b this space contains a function f which is defined on the interval a b right function defined on the interval a b such that f f dash up to f n are continuous okay this is the uh, this space is space of all such functions right so among all this uh, such functions which satisfy these boundary conditions that at a and b we know the values of y we know y at a and y at b then we know the derivative of y at a and derivative of y at b and then we know the n minus 1 is derivative of y at a and n minus 1 is derivative of y at b and so on. These are the boundary conditions which we are given and we would like to find out a function such that this functional has an extremum for that particular function right. So we will go to our usual tool. What is our usual tool? We would uh, like to find out the variation of this functional and then we will put that variation is equal to 0 and that will give us the necessary condition for the extremum of this functional, right. So, our only task is to compute the variation of this function. So, our task is to compute the variation, okay. So, what was variation? Uh, for example, if you have this functional j of y, then variation is you have to find out this increment j of y plus h minus j of y that will be equal to variation plus epsilon norm of h where this epsilon should go to 0 as h go to norm of h go to uh, norm of h goes to 0 right. So, we have to find this variation. So, we what we have to do? We have to compute this j for 
y plus h, where h is the increment function. Let us do that. So, suppose we have this y x, which is from our admissible set. Admissible set means this y of x is in the space d and a b and it satisfies all the boundary conditions. Okay. And this is also again uh, admissible. It means that this is in the space d and a b plus it satisfies the boundary conditions right so and we want to look at the increment delta j that is j of y plus h minus j of y we uh, we want to have some special observation about this h because this y and y plus h both are admissible functions it means that both satisfy the boundary conditions right it means that y plus h at a okay that is given y plus h at a is y naught, not zero. Okay, it is y naught, and y at a is also y naught. So it implies that from these two conditions, y of a plus h of a is equal to y naught. But y naught, y of a is h naught, uh, y naught. So y naught, y naught will cancel, and you will get that h of a is zero. Right. Similarly, y plus h dash a, that is y one. Okay, and y dash a is y1 therefore h dash a is equal to 0 and similarly we get h double dash a h n minus 1 th derivative of h at a is 0 and similarly we get h of b h dash b h n minus 1 th derivative of h at b is 0 right this is these uh, these conditions on h are obtained because of the fact that both y of x and y of x plus h of x satisfy the boundary conditions okay so now we this is the thing we know about h okay now what will be the increment increment that will be a to b f x y plus h y dash plus h dash y nth derivative plus h nth derivative minus f x y y dash y nth de de derivative dx now uh, on the first apply the taylor's expression you will get uh, when you apply the taylor's you will get f plus h f y plus h dash f y dash and so on plus h nth derivative f y nth derivative okay plus higher order terms that those terms will contain uh, like more than one order of h h dash h nth derivative right and this f and f will cancel you will be left with f y plus h plus f y dash h dash plus so on f y n h n dx this is equal to delta j so you get that delta j is equal to something plus this thing is of the order more than 1 with respect to h, h dash and, and its derivative of h. So this is the required variation. This is our delta j of y, y the definition of variation. So this is the required variation. So for the necessary condition, we must have that this variation should be 0, right? So we have this this thing is equal to our variation fine and necessary condition is that delta of j of h should be 0 so we get that that this variation should be 0 okay now what I am doing is I am just separating these integrals like I am separating these terms of the integrand so I will get a to b f y h dx plus a to b f y dash h dash dx plus so on a to b f y n h n dx is equal to 0. Keep the first part as it is and all the subsequent parts you have to integrate by parts. Okay. For example, I will take this second term, integrate it by parts. Uh, uh, suppose this is your first function and this is your second function. So, integration by parts will give you first function, integration of second function. So, integration of h dash will be h a to b minus differentiation of first function that will be dy by dx of f y dash times integration of second function that is that is integration of h dash will be h times dx right now because h of b is 0 and h of a is 0 so this term will vanish so you will be left with negative sign a to b d by dx of f y dash times h x dx okay now we will consider that second term what is the second term this is a to b f y double dash h double dash dx right now let us see what that term will give us So you have the second term, so integrate it by parts, 
treat it as a first function, treat it as a second function. So you'll have first function, integration of second function, a to b minus differentiation of first function that is dy by dx of fy double dash times h dash x dx. Now because h dash a and h dash b is equal to 0, so this term will vanish. So you will be left with minus a to b dy by dx of fy double dash h dash x dx. Again integrate it by parts because we want h x here, right? So when you will integrate it by parts again, treat it as a first function and it is it as a second function. So you'll get first function times integration of second function. The integration of h dash x will be h x a to b minus differentiation of first function. So already you have dy by dx of f y double dash. Again you are differentiating it. So you'll get double derivative of f y double dash. Okay. Times for, uh, integration of first function, uh, second function that will be h x dx. Again because h of b and h of a is 0, this term will vanish. So you will be left with minus 1 square, minus from here and minus from here, minus 1 square a to b d2 by dx2 of f by double dash hx dx. Okay. And similarly you can uh, do the integration by parts for the second, third term and fourth term and so on. For the nth term what you will obtain, you will obtain this is equal to when you will do the integration by parts. You will obtain minus 1 raised to power n a to b nth derivative of f by n hx dx right so what our variation will become so our, our variation will become we had this variation a to b f y d f y hx dx plus a to b f y dash h dash dx and so on plus a to b f y n hn dx is equal to 0 so we have computed these things right and we are substituting the values so we'll get fy hx will be common because in every term we are getting the hx so we, it will be fy minus dy by dx of fy dash for the second term it is d2 by dx2 of fy double dash and so on and the last term it is minus 1 raised to the power n dn by dxn of fy n times hx is equal to 0 right and this is true for every hx which satisfy these boundary conditions for every hx which satisfies these boundary conditions right now we in the uh, beginning uh, like in the earlier videos we have seen this lemma one this is the famous lemma we have used it over and again right what is this lemma this lemma says that if alpha x is a continuous function in a b and if a to b alpha x hx is equal to zero for every hx which is continuous such that h of a is equal to h of b is equal to zero then this alpha x is actually 0 for all x in a b. Now here see this is your alpha x. Alpha x h x dx is equal to 0 for every h x which is continuous and h of a is equal to h of b is equal to 0. Right. So we have this thing. It means that this lemma is applicable. So what we get is that this alpha x is equal to 0 for all x. So it means that we get f y minus dy by dx of f y dash plus double derivative of f y double dash and so on plus minus 1 raised to the power n and its derivative of f by n is equal to 0. This is the Euler's equation for this particular functional. This You can see that this is a differential equation of order 2n because n its derivative and then n its derivative. So this is a differential equation of order 2n. So the solution will contain 2n arbitrary constants and those arbitrary constants you will obtain using the boundary conditions. You are given y a, uh, you are given this y a is equal to y naught, y dash a is equal to so on. These things are specified, right? Y B specified, Y dash B specified, Y N minus derivative, N minus 1 is derivative of Y at B specified and N minus 1 is derivative of Y at A specified. So do you have these two N boundary conditions which you can obtain to uh, find these arbitrary constants which you will get in the solution, right? Now, now we have these three cases. Let us just summarize. For this case, F X Y Y dash D X, right? Your Euler's equation is f y minus d y by d x of f y dash is equal to 0. This was the first case. Second was you have f x y 1 y 2 y n then y 1 dash y n dash d x is equal to 0. So you have only first derivatives involved. In that case the differential equation is f y i minus d y by d x of f y i dash is equal to 0 for i is equal to 1 to n. You have these n differential equations. And then you have this case f x y y dash y nth derivative dx. Then this is the differential equation in that case. So you have three different cases, right? 
let us do one example right so find the extremal of this functional this is a functional right subject to these boundary conditions so you have second derivative involved so you have f is equal to 1 plus f uh, y double dash square so your Euler's equation will be because second derivative is involved up to second derivative is involved so your Euler equation will be f y minus dy by dx of f y dash plus d2 y by dx2 of f y double dash is equal to 0 so you have f y this is there is no y available explicitly so f y is 0 minus dy by dx of f y dash that is 0 again plus d, d2 by dx2 of f y double dash that is 2 y double dash is equal to 0 so you get fourth derivative of y is equal to 0 so you get y is equal to a just integrate it four times you'll get y is equal to a1 x cube plus a2 x square plus a3 x plus a4 these four constants a1 a2 a3 a4 they'll be obtained using these boundary conditions you have four boundary conditions you can just do the calculation y of 0 is equal to 0 implies a4 is equal to 0 and similarly y dash is equal to 0 y dash 0 is equal to 1 that will give you a3 is equal to 1 you can just derivate find the derivative and put uh, 0 and you'll get a3 is equal to 1 right and then y1 is equal to 1 that will give you a2 is equal to minus a1 and then y dash 1 is equal to 1 that will give you a1 is equal to 0 and then you get a2 is equal to 0 so your solution is uh, you have a4 0 this is 0 a2 0 a1 0 so your solution and a3 is we have computer somewhere 1 so a3 is 1 so yx is equal to x this is the required extremal of this functional right thank you